All right, we're going to do uh, uh, Chapter 7, Section K of the Standard Level Binomial Distribution, Part 1. We're going to talk about using the Pascal's Triangle. So just to, as a warm-up, what is 2x plus 3 to the 0 power? Well, as you know, every, anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, so if I've got 2x plus 3 to the power of 1, well, that's going to be 2x plus 3, right? What about 2x plus 3 squared? Well, if I use FOIL, I could represent that as 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, right? And then I get 2x squared plus 2x times 3 plus 2x times 3 plus 3 squared, right? So here I've got 2x squared, then I've got this guy plus this guy, well there's 2 of the 2x plus 3's, right? So I'm going to write a 2 there, and then if I've got um, x squared, we're going to give x squared. So we're going to notice the coefficients are 1, 2, and 1, right? And as you saw in the earlier video, this can be represented using Pascal's triangle right here, right? Where we have 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. And in the example that you saw in the video, it keeps expanding. So this value of 3 is achieved by the 1 plus the 2. This value of 10 is achieved by the 4 plus the 6. The value of 6 here is the 3 plus the 3. Okay. So what if I ask you to do 2x plus 3 cubed? Well, using the Pascal's triangle, we're going to use... Um, we're going to use this row here, and we're going to use the coefficients, the 1, 3, 3, and the 1. Okay, so you might want to hit pause, think about this, replay, and watch the other video if you need extra time thinking about this. So what if I'm going to do 2x plus 3 to the fifth power? Well, I need to use this row here, the fifth row. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So I can achieve that with the coefficients here of 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. And I start off with the 2x to the fifth power, 2x to the fourth, 2x cubed, 2x squared, 2x, and then there's no 2x. And then the 3, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4th to the 3 to the 5th. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with probability distribution? And that's where we're about to go explain right now. Okay. So, let's pretend we got a spinner, okay? And what is the probability of getting A in this example? Okay, well, one-third of the spinner is A, and two-thirds of the spinner is B. So we can think of it like this. Um, success is one-third, and failure is two-thirds. When dealing with binomial distribution, we usually think of it as success or failure. Okay, so, um, and something to note is that if I add success and failure, it will add up to one because you're either going to get success or failure, nothing in between, right? Okay, so this power here represents the number of spins, right? Um, so if I add success plus failure and I spin it once, um, this is going to add up to one. And another example of that would be, we did something like this um, a few days back where we flipped a coin. You either got uh, no heads, you got heads once, or you got heads twice. And if you add all of these probabilities together, you get one. So this would be 
a success of zero, a success of one, and a success of two. If you're flipping a coin twice, you're not going to get heads more than twice, right? So you're adding all of the possibilities, uh, probabilities together, and then you get one. So we're going to have the same thing happen. But you can't do it uh, the way that I just showed you. What if you're flipping the coin five times or spinning the spinner five times? Then we need to use um, Pascal's triangle to help us out. So, um, so what is the probability of getting A um, every single time when you spin it five times? Well, this one is a little bit easier because success is one-third. And so if you're going to get uh, one-third five times, I need to multiply one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third. And that's going to give me one-third to the fifth power, and that's going to give me this decimal. If you're going to round it to three significant figures, uh, these two um, zeros do not count with as being significant. The first significant figure is the four, one, and two. I have an additional video for sig figs if you need help with that. Okay, so now this seems a little bit easier, right? If I wanted success five times and I'm spinning it five times. But what if I'm going to spin it five times and I want to get a, I want to find the probability of getting a four times or three times or two times? I can't do it this way. This is not going to work. So this is where Pascal's triangle is going to come in. Okay. So, um, so here I've got one third and plus two thirds to the fifth power. Okay. So as we said before, um, this represents success. This represents failure. Okay, so before we answer the question, let's just expand Pascal's triangle and expand this. So uh, my leading coefficients are going to be, okay, ignore this. The leading coefficients are going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Okay, and um, we're going to have one third to the fifth power, one third to the fourth, one third cubed, one third square, one third, and then this is two thirds to the first power, two thirds squared, two thirds cubed, two thirds to the fourth, and two thirds to the fifth. Now, as we said on the previous one, this is getting um, a spinning an A five times. So this is a success five times in a row. This is success four times. This is success three times, success two times, success once, and getting no, no uh, letters of A. So in binomial distribution, we can write this as X equals five, X equals four, three, two, and one. So this represents um, having success five times. This represents having no success of getting the letter A. Okay, and you should think of it this way. Um, even if I didn't do any of this work, what is one-third plus two-thirds? You are correct. One-third plus two-thirds is one. And what is one to the fifth power? One. So all of these, if I add them together, I'm going to get 1. Hit pause and think about that for a second. Okay, so um, what if I'm asking you to find, what is the probability of getting exactly two heads? Okay, so if I'm going to get exactly two heads, then I've got the scenario where I want to find out this one right here, okay? The probability that, uh, um, that x equals 2. That's the probability of getting exactly two heads. Okay, so I'm going to do 10 times 
times one third squared times two thirds cubed, and that's going to give me this value. If they ask you to do it in three sig figs, on the IB test, this is what you would have to write. This first zero to the left of the decimal doesn't count, and those are three sig figs. Okay, what if they ask you, um, what is the probability of getting more than two heads? Well, let's think for a second. More than two heads is going to be, okay, so this is getting more than two heads, this is getting more than two heads, and this is getting more than two heads, right? I'm not going to count that one, and I'm going to count that one, or not going to count that one. So when it's finding the probability of getting more than two heads, we don't count the two heads, okay? If it said, what is the probability of getting um, at least two heads, then I would add the yellow one as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to add those three blue ones together. Okay, so um, one third to the fifth power is going to give me this value. Um, one third to the fourth times two thirds times five is going to give me this. One third cubed times two thirds squared times ten is going to give me this. If I add all of these together, we get this. And then if I convert this to three sig figs, you get this. This is what you need to do to do part one of your assignment. And if you need help, please rewatch the video and or send me an email and or come to my office hours.